This question appeared on a video about how to create PowerPoint presentations in Excel VBA. And what Marcelo wanted to know was how to create a routine to import all the slides from multiple different existing presentations into a single unique file. Now I'm not going to work with quite as many files as Marcelo is here, 300 plus, but the principles of the technique we'll use will remain the same regardless of how many PowerPoint presentations you're working with. To get set up, I've got a basic Excel workbook ready to go, and that's saved in the same folder as a subfolder called Presentations, which contains just four basic PowerPoint presentations. And each one of these summarizes the top 10 highest grossing movies in a particular year. The structure of each of these presentations is basically the same, although that's not too important. There's a basic title slide, a slide containing a table, and then two slides containing charts. We don't need PowerPoint to be open for this to work, so I'm just going to close down that presentation. And then in Excel, the workbook I've created is pretty much empty. We, we don't really need Excel here at all, to be honest. None of the techniques we're going to use are specific to Excel, so we could actually write all of our code in a PowerPoint presentation. Anyway, just for convenience, and as I've already started with an Excel workbook, I'm going to stick with this. And I've in the VB editor, created a new module, started a basic subroutine, and I've already set a reference to the PowerPoint object library. So if I head up to the tools menu and choose references, you can see I've set a reference to the Microsoft PowerPoint 16 object library. So the first thing we're going to do in here is create the basic code to generate the main presentation that we're going to copy all the slides into. So this is fairly standard stuff. We're going to use some basic early binding techniques. So we're going to say dim ppt as powerpoint.application and then dim pres as powerpoint.presentation and then dim sd as powerpoint.slide. Having done that, I'm going to create a new instance of PowerPoint. So I'll say set ppt equals new powerpoint.application and then I'll set pres to be equal to ppt dot presentations dot add. Finally, I'd just like to create a basic title slide so that we uh, we can summarize the information we're, we're importing. So I'm going to say set sd equals pres dot slides dot add slide. I need to in indicate the uh, the index number, the position that this slide will go into in the presentation. So I'm going to insert this as slide position number one. And then for the custom layout, I always find this slightly annoying to have to do it this way. We're going to say pres.slidemaster.customlayouts. And then we need to know the index number of the slide layout we want. I happen to know that slide, num uh, slide layout or custom layout number one is the one for the title slide of a presentation. So I'm going to go with that. And then we can just set up some basic text titles on that slide. So I'm going to say sd.shapes and then refer to the first shape by index number, refer to the text frame two property of that, and then the text range, and finally the text. And then finally, we can say film presentation to set the title of that entire presentation. And I'm just gonna quickly copy and paste that line, change the index number of the shape I'm referencing to shape number two, and then I'll just change the text here to say wise owl or something along those lines. Those are all fairly standard techniques and we've covered those in previous videos, which is why I went through that quite quickly. But if we can just quickly test run that one, we should end up with a new presentation, a single slide in it, film presentation, wise owl. So we've got our basic starting point ready to go. Now copying all of the slides from an existing presentation into the presentation that I've just created is actually really straightforward using the insert from file method of the slides collection. So let's pretend for a moment we were just going to do this for one single presentation rather than the 300 plus that Marcelo is working with. If I wanted to, I could say press.slides.insert from file. And then I simply need to provide the file name for the presentation containing all the slides I want to import. So to do that, I'm going to actually, I'm going to break this across multiple lines just to make it a little easier to read. So I'm going to refer to the file name parameter by name, file name colon equals. Then I'm going to refer to the path of this workbook and then concatenate to the end of that backslash presentations backslash. Then I simply need one of the file names from that folder. So I'm going to go films2017.pptx. So films2017.pptx. Now there is one additional parameter I must provide a value to, the index parameter. This is the slide number in the current presentation. 
that I want to insert my new slides after. So I'm going to say index colon equals and then I'm going to say the number one because I know there's only one slide currently in the presentation I've just created. OK, so I appreciate this is quite basic to begin with, but just to demonstrate that this does indeed work, let's run that subroutine again, and we'll hopefully see that we get all of the slides from Films 2017 imported quickly and easily into this main presentation. So copying the slides from a single presentation is pretty straightforward, but of course we've got multiple presentations to copy our slides from. And I don't want to have four separate copies of this instruction to import all of my slides. I'm pretty sure Marcelo doesn't want 300 copies of that instruction to import all of his. So to solve that, we're going to loop through the files in the presentations folder and import the slides from each presentation one by one. I'm going to use a fairly basic technique to do this. And the, way I, the reason I can get away with this basic technique is because all my presentations are stored in the same folder. If your presentations are stored in a more complex arrangement of folders and subfolders, then you'll need a different technique to loop through them all. And we do have a separate video which explains how to loop through folders and subfolders in VBA, so check that out if you need a bit of help with that technique. For now, I'm just going to head back to the Visual Basic Editor, and I'm actually going to comment out all the code that I've created for creating the new instance of PowerPoint and the new presentation, and then setting the text. So I'm just going to comment all of that code out for the time being. Then I'm going to declare a new variable, and this one's going to hold the file name for each presentation in the presentations folder. So I'm going to call this one pres file name as string. Then just above the instruction which inserts from file, I'm going to write a bit of code that will extract the first file name of a PowerPoint file in the presentations folder, and I'm going to store it in the pres file name variable. So pres file name equals then I'm going to use the dir function to extract the file name. In some round brackets, I can pass in the path name. And just for convenience, I'm going to quickly copy and paste the file name that I entered for the insert from file example down here. And then rather than referencing that specific file name, Films 2017, I'm going to replace that with the asterisk wildcard character. So what this should do at the moment is find for me the first file name of any PowerPoint file or any file with a PPTX extension in that folder. And just to demonstrate that that should work, I'm going to say debug.print pres file name. So at this point, I'm going to hit the run button just to prove that I get the first PowerPoint file located in that folder. Now all we need to do is make that happen for every other PowerPoint file in the same folder. So what I'm going to do is wrap this code up in a do until loop. I'm going to say do until pres file name equals an empty string. And then for each file that we encounter, I'm going to print out the file name. We're going to bring back the insert from file method shortly. And once we've inserted from a file, we're going to try to get the next PowerPoint file name. So we're basically going to say pres file name equals and then call on the dir function again. If you don't pass in any arguments of the dir function after the first time you've called it, it carries on attempting to locate the next file matching the same pattern we've just used here. So once I've done that, I can say loop. When the, um, the dir function has run out of files to find, it returns an empty string. So once we've listed out all the files, we'll end up back on this do until instruction. The pres file name variable will contain an empty string, so the loop will automatically stop at that point. So just to clear out the contents of the immediate window and then run the subroutine again, we should now see a list of all of the PowerPoint files in the presentations folder. So now that we're successfully looping through each file in the presentations folder, we can uncomment all the code which generates our new main PowerPoint presentation. And then we simply need to update the file name parameter of the insert from file method. Because we're not always going to be copying from films2017.pptx. So let's get rid of that part entirely. So we've just got this workbook.path concatenated with presentations. And then at the end of that, we can concatenate the value held in the pres file name variable, which will be each of these individual presentations one by one. So pres file name. At the moment, the new files or sorry, the new slides will be added after the first slide in the main presentation. 
If you'd prefer to have each set of slides go in at the end of the list of existing slides, we can change the number one there to refer to pres.slides.count. So the new set of slides will always be added to the end of the slide list. So having done all that, we can just run the subroutine again and we'll end up with a new presentation with all the slides from 2017 and 2018 and 2019 and 2020 as well. It seems a little unnecessary to include the title slide from each presentation. Unfortunately, the insert from file method allows us to choose a range of slides to import. So let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor and at the end of the insert from file method, we can add on an extra parameter. So I'll type in a comma followed by a space underscore. And then on the next line, I'm going to insert the slide start parameter. So I want to start copying slides from the second one of each presentation. And that by itself is sufficient to omit the title slide. While I'm here, I'm just going to comment out the debug.print statement. It seems a little unnecessary to continue doing that as well. So if we run the subroutine again, this time we'll find that the new presentation doesn't include the title slide from each presentation file. The last thing Marcelo wanted to do was to rename each slide that we've imported with the original file name. Now rename could have a couple of different meanings here. Just for the first simple example, I'd like to assume we just want to add a basic text box containing the file name on each of the slides that we import. And in order to get that to work, we first of all got to work out how to loop through all of the new slides we import each time we go through our do until loop. So to help with that, let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor and I'm going to add a couple of extra variables. First of all, a simple one that's going to act as our loop counter, so dim n as long, and then a couple of variables to help keep track of how many slides we have both before and after we've inserted new slides. So I'm going to say dim old slide count as long and also new slide count as long. To set the values of those two variables, old slide count and new slide count, inside the do until loop, before we insert from file, I'm going to say old slide count equals pres.slides.count. And then after we've finished inserting from a file, I'll say new slide count equals pres.slides.count. Now that we've done that, we can use those two values to loop through the new slides that we've, um, that we've imported. I'd also like to add a quick check to make sure that we have actually included some new slides in the presentation. It is quite possible if you're using the slide start uh, parameter of the insert from file method that you end up not actually importing any slides at all. So what I'm going to do is have an if statement that checks if new slide count is greater than old slide count, then. And if that's true, I'd like to loop through all of the new slides we've imported using a simple for next loop. I'll say for n equals old slide count plus one to new slide count. A couple of blank lines then, and we can finally say next n. And that's the basic loop setup for processing all the new slides imported from each different presentation. Next, we can add a text box to the slide that we're looking at in the for next loop. So to do that, we can refer to the pres object and then the slides collection and then refer to the slide using its index number using our loop counter variable. We can then refer to the shapes collection and then we can use the add text box method to create a new text box. There are several parameters we need to fill in here. So the orientation, first of all, for the text, which is going to be horizontal. And then the left property is the distance from the left of the slide to the left of the shape. Let's go with something like 50. The top parameter is the distance from the top of the shape to the top of the slide. I'll go with 50 for that again. And then the width, I'm going to set that to 200. And then the height, let's go with 20. Now this add text box method returns a reference to a shape object. And I'd like to change some of the properties of that shape object once we've created it. So to help with that, let's wrap this up in a width block. I then need to wrap a set of round brackets around my argument list for the add text box method and then a couple of blank lines and say end with. And then inside that block, we can start changing properties of the object. So let's just say dot text frame to dot text range 
dot text equals and then refer to our pres file name variable just like we set the text of our main title slide earlier on so having done that let's give this thing a quick test if we run the subroutine again we should end up with a new presentation and each slide that we create should have a little label in the top left hand corner containing the name of the file from which it was inserted so adding a text box to each slide works in a fairly basic way. We can see the file that this slide came from on the slide itself, but that name doesn't actually appear in other parts of PowerPoint. For example, if we were going to build a custom slideshow, I can enter the slideshow menu, choose custom slideshow, custom shows. When I go to pick my slides, they've all just still got their generic slide numbers. If I were to try to look at the outline view, if I head to the view tab in the ribbon and choose outline view, again, the slides don't actually have names other than the first title slide that we created. Now it is possible to manually rename slides in the outline view. If I start typing in a title for my slide, you should be able to see it appear in the slide itself. It actually creates a title text box, a placeholder text box. Now, what I'd like to be able to do is generate those title text boxes manually, or at least oh, automatically, I should say, in my code. Uh, to make that work, we will need to change the layout of the slides that we're importing. All the slides that belong to these presentations we're importing from have a blank slide layout. So what we'll need to do first, if I just head back to normal view for one of my earlier slides, what I'll need to do is effectively change the layout of the slide to a layout which includes a title placeholder and then change the text of that title placeholder to say something like films 2017 or the name of the file that it comes from. So that's what we'll aim to do in the next little example. Let's um, head back to the Visual Basic Editor and then rather than having this width block that adds the new text box to, the, to each slide, I'm going to comment that section out and then use a new width block. I'm going to say width pres.slidesn and then inside this new width block I'm going to do two things. First of all I'm going to change the layout of the slide to be equal to pp layout title only. So this is the one that will include the title text box placeholder at the top of the uh, top of the slide. Then I want to change the text of the title so I can refer to the shapes collection and then a title placeholder has a special property you can use to reference it called title. But it again is just a basic shape in PowerPoint. So it has a text frame to text range text property that we can make equal to pres file name. OK, so having done that, let's run that subroutine once again. We'll end up with a new presentation. But each one of these slides that we've imported has a proper formal title placeholder. So it's a lot more obvious and somewhat more neatly formatted as well than our basic text boxes. And if we head over to the slideshow view and use custom slideshow, when we're picking slides now, we've got some sensible names for the slides. If we head into the view menu and choose the outline view, we can see the titles listed next door to those as well. So hopefully that's enough to give Marcelo at least a starting point for importing your 300 presentations. Hope that was useful. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.